if we're given the general solution to a differential equation and we have an initial condition, we can use that information to find the specific solution that matches that initial condition. So here's an example. We have a given solution. Now again, we haven't talked about how to solve differential equations in general, but we'll get to that later on. For now, at the end of the problem, we can see that if we solved it and had the general solution, we could look back at the initial condition and figure out what specific solution matches that. So our general solution here is y equals c e to the negative 3t plus 10. And the initial condition is that y of 0 equals 5. All we do is plug in the 0 for t and the 5 for y. So we'll take this 0, plug it in for t, take this 5, plug it in for y, and then solve the resulting equation for c. This gives us 5 equals c e to the negative 3 times 0 plus 10. Notice that e to the power of 0 just equals 1. So 5 equals c plus 10. And pretty easily we can see that c equals 5, which means our specific solution is y equals 5 e to the negative 3t plus 10. And really that step is usually this simple, where we just plug in the values of t and y, and it's usually pretty easy to solve for c after that. Let me show you one that's slightly more complicated. Suppose we were solving a second order differential equation, and at the end of it, we found a general solution that looks like this. Suppose we have y equals c1 e to the x, plus c2 x e to the x. And later on we'll find out how to solve second order differential equations and we'll see solutions that look somewhat like this. Suppose we were also given initial conditions. Now notice that with two unknown constants, c1 and c2, we need two pieces of information to solve for those two constants. So in this case we would need two initial conditions. So let's say we're given that y of 0 equals 3, and then we could also be given y at a different point x, but a common thing you'll see is that instead we're given information about the derivative when x equals 0. And that's the case here. If you think ahead, you can think about in the physics domain, if position is your original function, the first derivative would be velocity, the second derivative would be acceleration. And if you're solving a problem where you know something about the acceleration and the velocity and maybe the position and you solve it, your initial conditions might be given to you as the initial position is known and the initial velocity is known. So this is a fairly common setup with second order differential equations where the given initial conditions are y of 0 and y prime of 0. They could be other things, but that's a fairly common set of initial conditions. Now the trick here is that we have to use both of these. So for this first initial condition, we can approach it just like last time, where we plug in 0 for x and 3 for y. But for the second condition, we need to know what y prime is for our general solution so that we can make the same kind of substitution there. So it's important that you plug in the information in the right place. The first initial condition will substitute into y. The second initial condition will plug into the derivative y prime. So let's find that derivative first. If the general solution is c1 e to the x plus c2 x e to the x, the derivative of that, the first term, will just be c1 e to the x again. For the second term, be careful here, you need to use the product rule. So without spending a lot of time on that, this is what you would get. And if you need to, pause here, go back and refresh yourself on the product rule and make sure that you can work it out and get what's shown. So now the specific solution 
if we plug in the first initial condition, we'll have three equals c1 e to the zero plus c2 times zero times e to the zero. Now, of course, that whole second part is just zero and e to the zero is just one. So this simplifies to just be three equals c1, which means we now know the value of one of these arbitrary constants and we can find the value of the other by making a similar substitution into the derivative. So now we'll take this here, we'll substitute negative one for y prime and zero for x. Again, this last part simply goes away, it's all zero. And both of the other terms, the e to the zero is just one, so this simplifies to negative one equals c1 plus c2. And now that we know the value of c1, we can plug that in and solve for c2, which is negative four, which means our specific solution is y equals three e to the x minus four x e to the x. So in general, when you're given a general solution and initial conditions to find the specific values of those constants, you're just substituting in and solving a little bit of an algebra problem. But even ones where you have two arbitrary constants, you can still approach in the same way. You just have to be careful to look at the information you're given and use it appropriately.